In today's video, I'm gonna be uncovering the secret to finding the perfect diet specific to your body's needs and discovering your body's true fitness potential. But how can we do that? The answer is in your DNA. Welcome back to my corner of the internet where I encourage you to be healthy from the inside out. If you're not part of my subscriber community, go ahead and just click that little subscribe button down below and the notification bell right next to it and you'll be notified every time I upload new content. So let's jump into talking about how our DNA can help us be the healthiest version of ourselves. You don't know what you don't know. Eye opening, right? For real? <laughs> yeah, really, we don't know what we don't know. And what you don't know, you can't fix, right? When I sent in my DNA and got my results back, it answered so many questions to why I was struggling in this area of weight loss and fitness. And it opened my eyes to things that I didn't know. So now that I know, I can do something about it. I'm gonna share that report with you guys here in just a little bit and walk you through what my report looked like and what I learned. So I hope you guys stick around to the end. But there's really no such thing as a cookie cutter diet. And it's unfortunate that there's so many of us, including myself, running around trying to do what everybody else is doing and hoping to get the same results that they're getting. And the problem is our bodies are incredibly unique. We're the only one with our specific DNA, genetic makeup, and all of those things. It's, it's just the way it is. And unfortunately, what works for some does not work for all when it comes to the diet and fitness world. But there are specific things that do work, such as eating healthy. But what does eating healthy look like for your body? We also know that working out and exercise is important for us, and it works as far as getting us healthy, but what does that look like for your body? Those are some questions that I was struggling for years to figure out. So I was one of those people who always looked at what everybody else was doing. Okay, she's doing keto and she's lost 30 pounds. Let me try that. Or hold on, he's doing the lemonade diet and he's lost 50 pounds in three weeks. Let me try that. For real, you guys, I have actually done the lemonade diet. I also did diets like the HCG diet, I've done a chicken and brown rice diet. I have looked up so many diets and researched diets and tried diets and followed people that were on diets. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have done so many of them. Problem is always the same though. I end up with the same results. I might lose some weight in whatever weight I have lost, I will end up gaining it right back. And there's a couple of different reasons for that. Obviously, I'm trying to do things that aren't necessarily the best thing for my body specifically. And number two, I'm not fixing what's going on up here in my mind. So after struggling for years, I finally found the answers I so desperately needed in my very own genetic owner's manual. There's a lot of programs out there that are gonna be able to help you with this, such as 23andMe. But the company that I'm gonna be talking with you about today is called Molecular Fitness. So before I go any further though, I just want to let you guys know I am not in any way an affiliate of Molecular Fitness. I'm just here to share with you guys what it is that I've done and my results. So the process to order your DNA kit is really simple. You just go on their website, create an account, place your order, and about a week later they'll send you your kit you're just gonna do your little cheek swabs. Make sure you read your directions that they send you, you guys. It's very important because if you don't read the directions and you send in your cheek swabs incorrectly, then you have to go through the process of reordering it and waiting longer and you don't wanna do that. And then about three weeks later, you're gonna get a detailed report. Mine was about 48 pages long, so it's pretty detailed, you guys. Sharing with you exactly what your body needs, what type of diet you should be eating, are you deficient in any specific nutrients and so many more things it's gonna go through. And that's what I'm excited to share with you guys about today. I've been thinking about talking with you guys about taking a DNA fitness test for a long time because the struggle is real. Like I get it. We spend so much of our time trying to lose weight or find the right diet for our body. What do I do? You know, and, and we just try and find the, the thing that works for us. And there's nothing wrong with swapping around until you find something that works for you, but it's so much easier when you really know exactly how your body responds and reacts to certain things. Some of the things that I've learned from taking this DNA fitness test is that my body specifically cannot do keto. That's a huge deal because a lot of people love keto. Low carb, high fat diets are great for them. I have a friend who has lost so much weight and kept it off for like the last 
probably four years now. So because she had lost all that weight, I thought, well, I should probably try what she's doing. So I did the keto diet and I didn't lose any weight. And then I did whole 30 and I gained 12 pounds and I couldn't figure out why, why wasn't this working for me? And once I got my DNA test back, I figured it out. That report specifically told me that I have a medium sensitivity to carbohydrates, but I have a high sensitivity to dietary fats. So what is the keto diet? It's a high fat, low carb diet. So the low carb thing's not such a big deal, but the high fat thing really was. So that's why I was gaining a lot of unnecessary weight trying to eat a bunch of fats and, and it just wasn't good for me. Healthy fat's good for me. Cheese, not so much. And bacon, probably not so much. You know, some of the things that are really staples of the keto diet are not good for my body specifically. And that test told me so. So I was really thrilled to find out that I didn't do anything wrong specifically. And I wasn't just overeating a bunch of cheese and bacon necessarily that made me gain the weight. So I just don't need to do keto. And I also found out in my DNA test that I have a really high risk of weight rebound. So every time I would go on a diet and lose weight, I could lose 30 pounds, 10 pounds, 100 pounds. I was going to gain that back really easily if I was not very careful. And I was never very careful. After I lost the weight, I didn't work on the things in my mind that would help me keep the weight off. So my mentality was hurry up and lose the weight, then go back to the way that I was eating before, and I would gain it all back very quickly and then some. So there's a lot of people that struggle with that. And I, I see it all the time on infomercials. I see it on ads here on YouTube. I see it everywhere targeting women specifically that have a hard time with losing weight and keeping it off. So how do we lose weight and keep it off? So this DNA test can really help you figure that out and help you to just be more self-aware. There's something about being self-aware that's so powerful. If we don't know, then we don't know, right? Like I said at the beginning of this video. So I didn't know that I had a high susceptibility, huge risk to weight rebound. And I just thought it was something I was doing wrong. <laughs> and technically it was because I was just jumping right back into chips and things like that. But on, on the natural level, my body just tends to gain the weight that I lose back very quickly. Also, I found out that I needed to eat small frequent meals throughout the day and stay really far away from extreme low calorie diets. It also told me that my body specifically is at high risk for overeating, and that's very true. I definitely have a hard time with portion control. That's probably my number one enemy even right now is portion control. I have to continuously be mindful of portions like crazy or I'm going to overeat. Also, my body has an increased risk of inflammation. It told me that, and I had already been dealing with crazy amounts of inflammation in my back prior to taking this test. So I was not surprised when I saw that, but I was surprised that the DNA pulled it up and said, hey, this is a problem for you. So let's eat a diet that has anti-inflammatory foods in it. And then they share with me what those were. The biggest shocker for me did not necessarily have to do with weight loss, but instead with fitness. I was so overwhelmed when I read this part of the report that talked about my muscular structure. My specific gene said that my muscular system is composed similarly to that of an elite athlete. So I was playing so small in my athletic ability it's crazy. I refused to try and do push-ups. I was like, no way, Jose, I can't do a push-up. I'm not made to do push-ups. I have no core. I can't get abs. I mean, every excuse in the book for why I knew that I was not going to be strong. Now, cardio, I could do. I could do cardio all day long. But when it came to actually being physically strong and thinking about weightlifting or, you know, just body weight exercises. I could not even wrap my mind around the fact that I was strong enough to do those. But when I read the results in that test, it said not only am I strong enough to do those, but hey, girl, you have the body composition of an elite athlete. So I was like, oh, but there's so many more things to unpack and uncover in that one little revelation of my body's muscular system. I thought a lot about that probably for six months after I took that DNA test because I took it in 2019 and I really didn't start implementing the things that I learned in it until this year that we're in currently, which is 2020. And I've lost a ton of weight and I've gotten so much stronger and it's taken me a lot longer than it ever has, but I'm uncovering things about myself that I didn't know. I am learning to be consistent consistent and do small things every day to make sure that I'm moving forward in my health goals. I'm doing things that I've never done before that I've always wanted to be the type of person that would do them, but I wouldn't do them. Now I'm actually doing those things. And so it's taking me a little longer, but I'm seeing 
great results. One night I was just really struggling, having some difficulty trying to find direction and uncovering my purpose. I was just journaling and praying and asking God to help me. And he reminded me of a specific revelation about my body's DNA. And he said, not only is your muscular system stronger than you ever gave it credit for, and you were playing small there too, but you're playing small in the game of life because there's so much more strength underneath that you have yet to uncover, that you haven't even began to tap into your full potential. And I'm talking to you right now. I'm talking to you because that's so true of all of us. We are capable of so much more than we give ourselves credit for. And so take a moment and just think about your life. And what are some things that you feel like you would like to do, but aren't so sure that you actually had the ability to do that? And just imagine the strength and ability that you don't even know is there coming to the surface and start walking in that. Start operating in the things that are actually available to you that are hidden, but they can be seen if you'll just ask God to reveal those to you. And I do right now. I'm just going to pray for you right now that God will reveal to you the strength and the ability that you have within you to do the things that he's called you to do and to lead you to the purpose that he has for your life. So I just pray right now that you guys would receive that and that you would just be open enough to believe that you do actually have strength within you to do the things that you were called to do by God and walk in those. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the results from my DNA test. And if you're being encouraged or getting value out of this video so far, go ahead and just give it a thumbs up real quick. I would really appreciate that. But let's go ahead and look at my report. All right, so guys, we're going to go ahead and go through my results for my molecular fitness DNA test, your genetic owner's manual for a healthier life. Can see in the table of contents just a few things it's going to go over like i shared earlier your muscle performance your aerobic potential how your body recovers your carbohydrates fat body weight weight regain and so many more things are in this report you guys so let's just go ahead and look at the summary of my results you can kind of get a quick synopsis of what's going on in your body with this summary right away before you even start reading into the results so they say the nutrition and fitness genetics report is your personalized owner's manual for how your specific body responds to diet and exercise based on your unique genetic profile. So by following the recommendations in this report and working with your body instead of against it, you're gonna be better able to maximize your results, uh, which is really the point of me doing this video for you guys so you can get an inside view of my results but kind of what's available for you as well. So then the summary goes into for me specifically inflammation. I can read about that on page 24. I showed you guys here that I'm an increased risk of inflammation and then it gives me just a really quick um, recommendation for what I should be doing to help with that. But on page 24, it's going to go into a whole lot more detail about inflammation, specifically the gene that was tested and some more dietary advice. Okay, so then let's look at the vitamins. So you can see it tested for vitamin A, vitamin D, and E. I had uh, standard requirements are needed. I had a slightly increased requirement of folate for my body. So I just needed to make sure that I'm taking an additional supplement, uh, folic acid, to make sure that I am getting the additional folate that I need and eating as many dark green leafy vegetables as possible. But in order to see the recommendations for that specific thing, I just need to go to page 32. Okay, so right here it's gonna talk about muscle performance and I need to do exercises that are like cross training. So I need to do things like try circuit training or boot camp style workouts, which is like, what? When I first saw that, I was like, what? I like doing Zumba and walking. <laughs> But I've learned that I really can do these things. Body weight, I have a moderate susceptibility to obesity. So that's really helpful to know that I have a little bit higher increased risk of being obese. So I need to be a lot more careful. My husband is one of those people that can eat anything he wants and he won't gain any weight. And I would always say, you know, what? how come I gain weight just by looking at stuff? And it does feel like that sometimes. But hey, it's in my DNA. I'm just more susceptible to obesity. I just have to be a little bit more mindful than somebody like my husband, who has an incredibly high metabolism and he may not have an increased risk of obesity in his DNA. High risk of weight rebound, so we talked about that and it says in here that I can just eat small frequent meals and avoid very low calorie restriction diets. 
because your body is likely to go into starvation mode and lower its metabolic rate. I have seen that over and over in my life and it has been so frustrating when I'm trying to lose weight and not eat a lot and I might lose that weight up front but then I'll gain it all back at the end or like I'm not eating a lot. I think, well, I don't eat very much. Why am I not losing weight or why am I gaining weight? This is why. So here's the muscle performance and this is why I was so blown away, you guys, when I was sharing with you earlier. It says that they tested the sprint gene, ACTN3, has a 40% frequency in the population of having two functional copies, which is commonly found in elite athlete sprinters and some endurance athletes. So it's basically just kind of giving you a synopsis of what this means and in this specific thing here, and I think that's pretty cool. So then it goes over here to your personal guidance, and it tells me I carry one functional copy of that ACTN3 gene, which is 45% of the population. And then it tells me that I'm expected to have a good potential for generating explosive movements required for jumping, throwing, and sprinting. So I was not um, aware that I was that strong and fast and capable of any of those things. So yes, with proper training, I have the potential to get there. That's, that's what matters is there's potential for that where I didn't know before that there was potential for it. Now I know. Okay, so uh, let's talk about fat loss with exercise. Uh, it just goes into telling me exactly how I need to exercise here. It tells me specifically the gene they tested for was this INSIG2 gene. And so if you guys can see this over here, it says, ever wonder why some people get results with seemingly minimal effort while others have to train harder and longer to achieve the same goals? Yes, I've wondered that. <laughs> Uh, so um, this right here just basically says as a result of genetics, some people will experience greater benefits with certain types of exercises and these genetic variants affect how fat is transported in the blood and where fat is stored for muscles at, to use as energy. One of the things I was really sad to see though in my specific DNA, I wasn't happy about this, it says that I had an increased propensity to deposit fat under my skin rather than in the muscles. Uh, basically just tells me that I need to include more cardio or high performance endurance activities along with strength training to maximize the benefit of exercising, such as high intensity interval training, an example of a specific workout that would be good for me. So that is so helpful, you guys. It's specific to my body telling me exactly how I need to work out. Now let's talk about the dietary carbohydrates and why I could not lose weight on a keto diet. So I have a medium sensitivity to carbohydrates. Uh, so it says for you, it's not about eating low carb. That's nice to know. It's more about eating better quality carbs, such as more beans and less corn syrup. We should all eat less corn syrup though, but uh, that's nice to know. Down here in this really bold print, it says, do not severely restrict all carbs or follow a very low carb diet for too long. Because for me specifically, this can actually result in greater insulin resistance as part of your body's starvation response. So no wonder I was gaining weight or not losing weight or feeling really bad when I was doing a keto diet because I specifically um, do not need that. So also tells me right up here that at any time when you eat a carb-rich food, be sure to include some protein, fiber, and fat, healthy fat, okay, healthy fat, into that meal. And this is especially important after long periods of fasting. So long periods of fasting are after you've eaten dinner and you don't eat anymore until breakfast. That's a pretty long period of fasting. That's why breakfast is called breakfast. You're breaking a fast. So at breakfast, I need to eat a carb, protein, healthy fat, and a fiber. I have a high sensitivity to dietary fats. It's not just the amount of fat you eat, it's the type of fat that plays a more significant role. It shows that I have a moderate susceptibility to obesity. I just need to be a little bit more cautious, that's all. It says you need a high intensity exercise to counter genetic effects on hunger and appetite suppressing hormones because when you exercise, you are actually suppressing your appetite. This tells me what I need to eat, what I need to drink, and how to exercise specific to my body. This also tells me that I have a high risk of rebound weight gain, which I shared with you guys earlier. Ever wonder why some people have a hard time keeping weight off after dieting? Hmm. Ever wonder that, you guys? <laughs> uh, tells me specifically, you should eat small, frequent meals because your body is likely to go into starvation mode and lower its metabolic rate after periods of dieting. The genetics that they tested for in that specifically and then gives me a personalized guide and it tells me just to avoid going on and off diets. Don't go long periods of time without eating so I don't need to be doing intermittent fasting. I need to just 
not eat after dinner, wake up in the morning and eat breakfast. My body's likely to go into starvation mode if I am not feeding it. And it's gonna lower my metabolic rate, which will make me more prone to be hungry once food is in sight, and then I will eat everything that I'm not supposed to be eating. I need to exercise more to increase my metabolism. And then it says even right here, various types of exercise can stimulate different hormones related to appetite. So it's really good. It tells me to get plenty of sleep, that this is gonna counter the effect of my genetic profile on my level of hunger hormone. So the hunger hormone, there's an actual hormone for being hungry, you guys. Isn't that crazy? Um, needs sleep, it needs to be eating every two to three hours, and I need exercise. So I definitely struggle with overeating. This is probably one of the things I've struggled with my entire life. Since I was a little girl, I have always wanted to eat way more than I should, and this is why. This gives me a little advice to be sure to wait at least 30 minutes before going for seconds because my brain responds a little bit more slow to the signals from my stomach that I'm full. And... Uh, yeah, that's tough for me. Once I started implementing into my diet to eat one serving and then wait 30 minutes before I go back for more, within that 30 minute time frame, I've forgotten about the food. I don't want it anymore. I'm not hungry. I'm moved on to something else. Like I'm good. So it's definitely helped me this year for sure on my weight loss and health journey to know that I have this high risk of overeating and to make sure that I'm implementing waiting before I go back for seconds. So I just wanted to share those few things with you guys so you could get an idea about what this looks like and kind of how this works and why you might want to get one for yourself as well and find out what are some things that you could be changing that are gonna be specific to you. So what I'm doing may be working for me, but it's not necessarily gonna be something that works for you. So find out what's gonna work for you and start doing that. So using this DNA test has really changed my life. I've been able to lose over 30 pounds now, implementing just a few of these things that I just shared with you in the discovery of what is going on in my genetic roadmap to health. And I have been able to just really see some great results in my body. And hopefully you guys will too. But you know what? There are some tried and true things that you can do to be healthy without even really kind of knowing your body's specific DNA makeup. And that's just making sure that you're eating as much whole food diet as possible. You know, your portion sizes are under control. You know, you just don't want to go out and eat fast food every day and cheesecake and all those type of things. You know, there's just certain like no brainers to making sure that we can lose weight and be healthy. But this is not just about weight loss. This is about being the healthiest version of ourselves. And in order to be the healthiest version of ourselves, we have to not only find out what it takes to get healthy in our body, we also have to retrain our brain and get healthy in our minds and rethink about some of the reasons why we maybe choose to overeat or why we're choosing the specific foods over those type of foods and getting ourselves to a place where we are being kinder to ourselves and replacing negative self-talk with positive self-talk and finding things about yourself that you can be thankful for instead of just focusing on the things you don't like about your body just appreciate your body for what it is so if you've been struggling hopping from diet to diet and trying to figure out why your body isn't doing what you want it to do this could be the answer for you so hopefully this has been a helpful video for you guys today and if you have any questions I'd be glad to answer those so I want to hear from you what is it that you struggle the most with when it comes to getting healthy and staying there but that's it for now you guys thank you so much for watching and don't forget to click that subscribe button down below for more healthy from the inside out videos. You guys have a great day. Bye.